Alright guys, Pax at Bonum. So today we are going to have a new lesson. And our lesson is all about arrays. Our learning competencies today are to identify parts of an array and then we will create an application that utilizes a one-dimensional array. So for my motivation, I want you to look at the image. And definitely, you know what it is. It's an empty egg tray. Now, aside from eggs, I want you to think about what other items can you place inside. So actually, it can be anything like marbles, uh, paper clips, or anything, any, any item that can fit it. But in the series of examples, of course, um, I will be using eggs as the items that can be placed inside. But the question I want to pose is, if we put items inside this empty egg tray, and if you will ask another person to get a particular item, out of the tray again a particular item out of the tray how will you tell that other person to get what you want so most probably well you will think that if you are going to ask another person to get an item it is either you will state the actual name of the item or you will probably tell the other person to get the nth item, when I say nth, the, the order of numbers starting from or, or with a starting point. Normally, our starting point is an item on the leftmost side. So if you are going to ask it or ask another person to get an item, let's say, around here, you'll probably ask the person to get the fourth item from the left. So meaning, you are going to use numbers to rep to reference a particular item. So if you are go again, if you are going to ask the person to get an item from here, you are going to say, "Please get the first item." If you are going to ask another person to get an item here, you are going to ask them to get the second item. So again, we are trying to use numbers to reference a particular item in an empty tray. And that's how arrays work. We can place items inside a container and then we just put items or we can retrieve items using a reference number. So what are actual arrays? Let's talk about some examples here. Oh, there we go. By the way, um, here are the, the reference numbers that I'm talking about. Um, the, the first one will be one, second will be two, so on and so forth. So you may think of the item, the actual item that we can put inside the tray as our values. So like any other value, like integer, string, boolean, or, or other objects, they are values. And the empty tray, you may think of those as one variable. In terms of array, yeah, the empty tray is our array. But you may, uh, at this point, you may consider it as one variable. Now, if that variable has different values, that's how an array works. Now, in, like uh, what is written here in the analogy, this variable holds many values and this is the concept of what we call an array. So actually, an array is a collection of values that is stored under one name and the important thing is they hold the same data type. It is denoted by having brackets after its name. Let's look at an example. Here we have my array followed by the brackets. So it signifies that this word or keyword is an array and it has a number inside the brackets, 10. So what are the uh, what are these different parts? The first one is 
the actual array name. So again, you may think of it as a variable. However, an array may contain different kinds of values or it can contain many, many values. The array name is followed by the brackets. Inside the brackets is what we call its index. And later on, we will cover what an index is. So to declare an array, we will be using this command. Either you use the keyword data type followed by the array name and then the brackets, it will get a new data type and then length. In this case, the length here, it's not the index. Earlier, I said this is the index, right? We will cover it later on but for now in declaring uh, arrays the one inside the brackets is ac actually the length so what is the length it's how many items an array can take or you can also use this syntax data type followed by the array name and then the brackets and it will get the actual elements so let's look at some examples on how to use this one and this one in declaring. So first, if I will declare a variable, a normal variable, let's say I will have a variable named tray. So you have one container and it has a value, the string egg, E-G-G. So if you are going to present it visually, it's like this. So this is your value. This is your value, and the tray is this one. So tray is the container, egg is the value. But if you will declare an array, it looks something like this. String tray with brackets, and it will get the different values, brown, white, light, light, off-white, and light. So there are how many? One, two, three, four, five six different values so it looks something like this in an analogy so you have your tray and then you have the different values inside that tray so as clear as day, an array may contain different kinds of values compared to a normal variable wherein it can only contain one value. Now, another example. Let's say I will declare a variable, an integer variable num. It has a value of 5. So our container, this is num, the box. And then we have the value 5. If I will declare an array integer in num, this is the array, and it will contain the values 3, 4, and 5. So look at this. Num is this box, and it contains 3, 4, and 5. Now, the question is, how can we reference a particular array element. Let's say you want to use an array element to store a value. How should we do that? So let's look at this example. Um, this is another type of declaration. What I have here is I have an array named A and then it gets new in 5. So this one is our length. It means that a container named A will have five spaces. So something like that. Now these are the five different spaces. And these five different spaces, to reference them, we will be using what we call the index. Now look at how the index was written. It starts at zero and it ends at 4. So if we have a declared length, 
in our array, the first element will start at index 0 and it will end at index length minus 1. It's always like that. The last element in an array will always be index, uh, sorry, it will always be length minus 1. Now, an array is always referenced by its index and it always starts at 0. So, all arrays always start at 0. Remember that. So, let's say, for example, I have here an assignment of values. The array name followed by the index 0. So, it will have a value of 20. So, looking at the, the visual representation, the first box is actually 0. And that's where our value 20 will be placed. So there are other kinds of values, but the important thing is when we use a normal assignment operation, we must place the array name and the index. So this 20, that is the actual value that will be placed inside an array. And then this zero rev, uh, references the index. It pertains to the index. So for example, we will, we will assign to the last element the value one, right? Ah, uh, sorry, let's start with, let's start with the first, no, sorry, the second array. So we will use A and the reference index one will get 60. So that's how you will write it. If you want to assign the value 60 to the second element A1. Or if you will if you are going to assign 36 to the next array element, it will be A index 2 gets 36. Or the, the next one is A index 3 gets 42. And the last one is A index 4 gets 1. Now going back, remember that we've declared an array with 5 spaces only. It starts from 0 and it ends at 4. What if we assign In A5, the value 100. Again, the length is only 5. The last element is length minus 1. That is 4. So if we are going to assign a value to A index 5, supposedly A index 5 will be here. But the thing is, we are only, or we only have 5 elements. This is the first second, third, fourth, and fifth. We are trying to access a sixth element. Ito yung pang-anim. This, will, this will be the sixth element. And we are trying to assign 100, right? But this one is actually not possible. Again, because the, the length of the array only has five elements. This one, A index 5, is actually non-existing. So if, if the container is non-existing, it will actually produce an error. What kind of error? The error name is index out of bounds. Meaning, our index is more than the length. If the index is more than the length, it's like saying you are trying to uh, you are trying to place an item in a container that is not existing. So the item, if you try to place it in a container that is not not existing, the item will fall off. So that's also how values work when we try to put it inside an array element that is not existing. 
So how will you make sure that the index out of bounds will not happen? Of course, you have to make sure that the, the, the elements that you are referencing will not go outside of the length or it will not be more than the length. Now, for your activity, I want you to try creating your own arrays. You use names, or sorry, the values that you will put. Uh, you are required to put 10 values. Now, the values that you must put, it should be relevant to the array name. So, for example, you will create an array name, cars. The values inside cars can be like um, Hyundai, Toyota, Rolls Royce, Benz. So what I'm trying to say here is the values must be relevant to the array name. So that will be your activity for a level up task. I want you to display the contents of the array. So that's it. Um, I hope you do the activity well. If you have questions, don't hesitate to ask me. Goodbye.